have a message titled, He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. You know, and this kind of applies to motherhood as well, right? So you find out that you're pregnant, do the pregnancy test at home or at the doctor's office. You're super thrilled. You're, you know, excited. And you just you got to tell somebody. You call your husband and you're fired up and you're trying to call grandma and grandpa or the new grandparents that are going to be. And it's a really exciting thing when you have this kind of news. You can visualize, you see this baby, you know, in your future. But then there's this nine-month time of waiting. It's a nine-month time of preparation. It's preparing the mom's body to deliver. It's preparing the child to be delivered. It's preparing the father to not sleep anymore. You know, there's this time of preparation that's happening in this nine months. And today what I want to talk to you about on this Mother's Day is how do you process through having a vision, having a dream in your heart, you can see it, you can taste it. It's like, ah, like it's almost right there, but God's given you a weight. He's giving you a red light. You're, you're just like, I want to move forward and everything inside me is trying to make this thing happen. But it just seems like there's a roadblock. There's a weight. Something's halting me. And how do we process through that without getting discouraged? How do we process through that, through that without getting disappointed and giving up on the dream and on the vision? Has anybody ever been there? Is there anybody that's there right now? It's like, man, like I've grown weary in trying to keep pressing through and trying to keep believing and trying to have faith for something that I thought I would see here manifested now. But man, it's been years and it's just not here yet. Well, today I want to speak to you and I want to bring encouragement. I want to bring hope to you today. I want you to understand that God does have a plan and God is faithful to his word. The thing that he's promised you, the thing that he's dropped in your heart, you can know this, that it will happen. But there's something that you also need to know is that God works his best sometimes in the wait. And that God is always working while we're waiting. You know, I, I look at my own life and and how I, I approach things when I have to wait. You know what I did? I caught myself going to a fast food place recently. And I didn't care what I was going to eat. You know what I was looking for? I was looking for the shortest line. So I would just roll up. Ah, oh, no. Just keep driving with my big old truck. No, it's too long. No, try this place. And I picked what I was going to eat based on how I could get fed the fastest. Anybody ever done that? Come on, man. Am I the only weirdo in Beaumont? You know, I was on Amazon too shopping and I hit the little filter that said Amazon Prime because I knew that I could get it like next day or same day. Anybody shop that way? Yes. Come on. Some of you are out there. Why? Because we're impatient. We don't like to wait. But the danger is, is that translates into our own spiritual lives many times too, is that we pray and we want instant results. We read the word of God and we start moving and say, man, I feel like God's got a call for ministry in my life. And it hasn't happened yet. I don't understand, man. I've been reading my Bible for two weeks and I'm not the pastor. Like, what's going on here? Some of us, we do that even in the gym, right? We go over there and we're there for a month, you know, that free subscription. You know, they let you in. You go in there and work out about 30 minutes a week. And you're like, yo, where's my six pack, man? I thought they were handing out six packs around here. And I don't got my six pack because there's this process of waiting. There's this process of growing through. And I want to talk to you about that today. Because I think that as Christians, often we, we've been taught that, you know, the promises of God are for you. And listen, the promises of God are for you. They are yes and amen. There's without a doubt that God's promises are true and they will come true all the time. But because they don't happen in our timing, we start to think, oh, I miss God. Some of you, you carry a lot of guilt and shame in your life because you feel like you've stepped out in faith. You started tithing. You started serving. You started trying to grow closer to God. And ever since you did that, it seems like everything's going worse than it was before. And there's this voice in your head that's saying, you're doing something wrong. There must be sin in your life. There's sin in the camp. Something's going on. Something's wrong with you. Because it's not happening in your timing. And today what I want to do is I want to strip off that, that covering, that fog that the enemy puts on you to get you to, you know, basically walk away from your faith. I've seen people do that. The discouragement, the disappointment, it sets in and they're like, I don't know, man. I tried that God thing. I tried that whole thing. It just doesn't work. And the enemy many times will win the battle because people don't understand that waiting is actually a part of a believer's life. 
that being a healthy believer, that often waiting is going to produce some of the greatest results in your life. And so I need to help you understand the truth today, and then we're going to learn how to apply that truth. Are you guys with me today? Because this is what happens often, and I've done this too, is that when we get in a waiting situation, let's say we're at a stoplight. Remember, we kind of used that analogy last week with fear. You had a collision in the intersection, and now you're afraid to actually get behind the wheel and move forward. So you've been stalled out because of fear of what happened. Well, in the same way, some of us, we approach the intersection and we hit a red light and we don't like red lights. We don't like waiting for red lights. So what do we do? We take alternate routes. We hook a right, we hook a left, and we start taking these unauthorized detours in our lives, trying to avoid the wait, trying to circumvent God's plan. And here's the danger in doing that, is that God often will say, pump the brakes and put you at a red light because he's working some stuff out in order to really ensure that you have success as you pass through. But some of us are like Pastor Steve, man, Siri gives me directions. And sometimes I'm like, no, I know a better way. Do we got any of those out there? So you're like, no, I know a way better way, man. Siri's slow. She don't know what's going on, man. She talks funny too. And, and so, so you, end up, you end up doing your own thing and then come to find out it took you longer. Why? Because Siri also is keeping track on everybody, which is kind of a scary thing, but keeping track on areas that are slower and this and that and provides the fastest route. And many of us, that's exactly what we do. And when you take detours, what detours do, detours before God is really, it's an act of disobedience. And when you start taking detours of disobedience, you end up with disobedience leading to destruction. And see, when you're on your own route and you're doing your own thing, what you'll find is that you, because of that disobedience, you'll find yourself, you know, going off of drops. You find yourself in some dirty places. You find yourself doing some stuff that is actually degrading and is actually taking you away from the plan of God. So see, this is what I don't want to happen today. I don't want you living with this guilt and shame because I'm at a stop sign and you're like, man, I must have done something wrong. I'm in a spiritual timeout right now. God's punishing me. I must have done something wrong. No, you're just in the waiting. And some of you, I just need to simply warn you today, you got to get off the detours. It's okay to wait. Stop detouring just to keep moving, to feel like you're moving. Some of us, this is a reality, guys. Listen, and I didn't, this is not in my notes, but I need to say this is that some of us, we struggle when we're at a stop because we have to face ourselves. Some of us struggle that when we're at the stop because we have to to face the reality of who we really are. Some of us, it's the same thing. Some people live, I don't know if you've been around people, they always have to have a TV on, they always, always have to have music on, they have to have noise because when it gets quiet, you have to deal with what's really going on internally. And so today... I want you to understand, have a good perspective, a fresh perspective of what it is to wait. When I talk about destruction, I don't want to pick on moms, but there is a story in the Bible with a woman. Her name was Rebecca. She had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And I I want you to see something here. She took a detour. She circumvented God's plan and his best because she thought that she knew best. Listen to this. It says, now my son, so she's speaking to Jacob, which is the younger son. She says, listen to me. Do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it. Let's move on. And bless you before he dies. You're going, what a weird story. What's going on here? So they have these two sons, okay? Esau is the older son. So in God's eyes, he has established that the older son has the rights. He has the the rights to a bigger portion. Well, mom doesn't like that. And sometimes some of you moms, come on, man. Like we, not we, but you. (laughs) I was going to include myself in there. Come on. I was like, come on, girl. Let's just talk. The pastor knows what you feel. No, I don't. (laughs) I don't know. I've never been a mom. But you know how this even translates to parents. But moms, right, a lot of times you don't like when your child is picked on or overlooked. Right. And we kind of like, come on, you got to push you to the front, you know, and hey, he's really good at, you know, it, you know how that works. That's just that's in you. God put that in you. And so we see Rebecca, the same thing's happening as she has two sons. And for whatever reason, she don't like Esau that much. She likes Jacob, her youngest son. But she knows that it's God's will that Esau would have that that, you know, blessing. And she's saying, listen, we're going to trick. We're going to deceive. We're going to manipulate 
So your dad gives you the blessing. But here's what happens. He does get the blessing. They trick dad. They fool him. But that blessing brought destruction. You know what it did is it took two brothers and it destroyed their relationship. Because when Esau realized what happened and that his, his rights and his blessing was stolen from him, he wanted to kill his younger brother. And so Jacob, the younger brother, although he got the blessing, he spent the majority of his adult life running from his brother for fear of retribution. Are you seeing that? That sometimes when we circumvent God's plan and we're not willing to wait and we step out and like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to manipulate this. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to push this thing forward. And, and I'm just, it's just going to, it's going to happen. I see the vision and I, I just know better. You end up actually destroying things that God was trying to put together. And seeing if God saw that it was fit to bless Jacob, he would have blessed him himself. And we know that later in the Bible that God's eye was on Jacob and he did bless him. He didn't need mama's help. And so I say to you today that God's working in the wait. He's working in the way, and you have to trust, you have to believe that he is doing that. Turn to your neighbor and say, no detours. Some of you say, you got to get back. <laughs> Some of you want to detour right now, and God is saying, you got to get back. But listen to this. In Psalm, in Psalm 27, 13 and 14, this, this verse has meant so much, or these two verses have meant so much to Veronica, and I will share why. But listen to this. This is, how, this is how you stand in that place of waiting at the red light and you don't lose heart. This is how you don't get disappointed. This is how you don't get discouraged. This is how you don't give up. This is how you don't head up on a, on a detour. Head up on a detour. I don't know what that means. You don't head out on a detour. It says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, a year and a half ago when Veronica was diagnosed with cancer, everything was going wrong. Everything was coming against us. We had this vision of planting a great church. We had a vision of seeing a city change. We, had, we see a vision of our kids serving God and loving God. We had all these things that God had put in our hearts, and it just seemed like everything was evaporating. And as we were moving forward, it seemed like everything came to a screeching halt. End up online for all these months, and it just seemed like everything was going wrong. But we stood on this promise. And Veronica and I, we looked at ourselves and we said, you know what, babe, you are not going to die. And we are not going to see God's goodness with you in heaven. We're going to see his goodness here. And that we would see your healing here. That people would know that God is powerful and that God loves you and God loves me and God loves everyone around here and that he wants the best for you. And we were convinced of this and we would tell each other that we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so I say to you today, this promise stands for you. If you're at a halt right now, if you're battling something, you've hit a roadblock, you've hit a red light, and you're going, man, I don't know. I'm here to tell you today that God promises you this, that you will see the goodness of God, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But this is what he's saying. Wait on the Lord. We don't like that part, but it's part of it. If you're going to see his goodness, wait. So that's how we do it in faith, with crazy faith, believing and trusting. I can't see it. Got a vision. And then here I am looking at a full room right now. In first service, we were looking at people that are coming and experiencing God's presence and getting healed and getting restored and redeemed and people are giving their life to Christ. What we saw as teenagers, we're seeing. Because God is good. And we won't give up. And we'll keep pressing. So there's two things that God does in the time of waiting. There's two things that are happening. I want you to see these in Scripture today. And it's going to help you process. It's going to help you process in the wait. He's doing two things. So number one is this, because remember, he's always working in the waiting, is that 
there are divine delays. There are divine delays that are going to happen in your life. There are things that, are, that God is doing behind the scenes. He's moving people. He's moving resources. He's shifting things. He's getting people into positions that are going to give you a yes because the one that's in there right now would give you a no. So God's got to get them out. He's moving and shifting things all the time. And there's divine delays as he's working on your behalf. And you've got to believe that. So sometimes you're out of weight and you're like, you know what, God, what are you doing? I don't see it. I don't understand it. I'm frustrated and I'm tired. I've been praying this thing for the last 15 years and I'm ready to give up. But something inside you says, God, what are you doing? I know that you're doing something good and I'm going to choose to wait today in order to see this thing come to life that I will see it with my own eyes. Listen to what it says in Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. It says this, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Let me stop right here. God has given you a vision. God has given you dreams that he's locked inside your heart. For many of you, you have a call in your life. For some of you, you've stood in lines and somebody has prophesied over you and said, you know what, I believe that God is going to do this through you. And so you walked away with great faith saying, yes, I believe that. Yes, I receive that in faith and I receive that thing with joy. So the vision has been set. God has given you a vision for something. But here's the part where we get tripped up is that we forget that it's yet for an appointed time. God has a time. There is a divine delay because it's not the right time to release it. You know, many of us, we don't realize that we've got big dreams, but we don't have the capacity to apprehend that dream or to live in that dream yet. I remember somebody saying one time, it's like, if you want to be a millionaire, you have got to have millionaire skills. And so some of us, we have this vision of being successful at something, but God on the back end is like, it's not time because you don't have the skill. You don't have the know-how. You don't have what I need to put in you yet to actually live that out. But the dream is still there and he's working on you to get you there. But often it is a divine thing where he's doing some shifting and making things happen. And he says, but at the end of it, but at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. What's he saying? What he's saying is what I told you is going to happen, it will prove itself out. That the miracle, that the breakthrough, that the yes that I give you, it's, it's going to prove itself before everybody that what I said to you was not a lie. So church, listen to me. Some of you, you have been given a word from the time you were young. I had a word from somebody that prayed over me when I was 13 years old. Okay, I'm 46. That was a long time ago. And they said, you will pastor a great church someday. And I believed them. Some 30 years later, standing in the promise, and it will not lie. You know what one of the coolest things was when we were online? is my old youth pastor, Pastor Chris DeFrena. He would jump online and watch me preach. And he would be one of the most encouraging people on there and say, I always knew, I always knew that God was on your life and would encourage me. It will be proved out, whatever it is that God has spoken, if you're willing to wait and stop taking detours. Because your detour are delaying your breakthrough most of the time. It says, through, it says, though it tarries, so it's saying, though it's kind of held up, wait for it, because it will surely come. Divine delays. God's working on your behalf. You know, we owned a heating and air company for a number of years. And one day, I was driving down the street. I see this project. There were these homes that were being built, and I was like, I really want that job. You know, the homes weren't too big, so I knew we can get in there fast, make some money, and roll. And uh, I got there, it just so happened, the owner, the guy that was running the whole thing was there. We ended up exchanging business cards. We had a couple phone calls. We talked some things over. I gave him a bid. Everything seemed so positive, and I really wanted that job. Well, all of a sudden, the calls just kind of dried up. I'd call him. He kind of ghosted me a little bit. At that time, it wasn't called ghosting. Now we know it's a new term. I'm trying to be hip and young. <laughs> Dude straight up ghosted me. I wasn't trying to have a relationship with him. I just wanted a job. But... And it just seemed funny. It seemed weird. I couldn't understand where he was so kind and kind of welcoming, and then things just boop, cut off. And then about three weeks to maybe three or four weeks later, I drive by the project, and I see that that property had been foreclosed on, that the bank took everything back. And I thought, man, 
Here I was thinking this was a God thing. My hope was up. Man, I'm going to get that job. I'm going to get that job. And I was disappointed when I didn't. Only to find out that God was actually shielding us and protecting us. Because if I had taken that job and it had worked out, I would have put money into supplies. I would have put you know, man hours and manpower onto that. And we would have been up a creek. We would have paid all of that out but we wouldn't have got any of it back. But God, through his divine providence, he protected us through a divine delay. And so understand that today, that God takes the good, he takes the bad, he takes all of it, because he's shifting things around. Why? To fulfill his word to you. Because our God doesn't lie. But you got to be willing to wait. Amen? You guys with me? Here's the second thing that you got to get today is that there are also, so he uses divine delays and then he uses structural delays. I'll explain this, okay? So you're like, structural delay, dis, dis, pff, delays. I said displays. <laughs> we don't want any structural displays. <laughs> We're doing delays today. But, but what I mean by this, how, how many of you guys remember Property Brothers or Fixer Upper, those shows? I, I love to watch those shows, man. I know a bunch of people do. That's why they have a bunch of them. But um, Chip and Joanna Gaines, right? And then those two brothers that would buy properties. It was really interesting because they would get invested in these projects. And then as they started tearing things apart, they would start finding delays, right? (laughs) They would be like, oh, well, this is going to set us back about two weeks or whatever. Why? Because as they uncovered what was really going on inside the house, they realized that there were some foundational issues. There were some things going on inside the house once they got the drywall or the old plaster off, and they're like, you know what? This is not up to code. Actually, this is dangerous. You know, we could see that the floor is sinking right here, and we need to get in there and jack that up and get it level again. There were structural issues. There were structural integrity issues with the house. Well, in the same way, I believe that some of us, we are believing for God to give us the yes, to move us into that promise, and he's saying, you know what? I want to do it and I will do it, but there's some structural integrity issues we got to deal with on the inside of you. There's some of you, including myself, that we're believing to, you know, obtain and to grab a hold of that promise. And God is going, if I give it to you right now, you'll grab it, but you won't be able to live in it. Because your integrity, or maybe you're, you're too fearful, or maybe there's, you, know, you lack courage, or maybe there's some issues, there's some perversions, there's things that if he put you in that place, it would elevate you, and then the enemy would come over there and whack you out at the knees, take you out. And God is saying, listen, I need to strengthen you. I need to move some things around. I need to shift some things inside of you first. We need a little bit of a structural delay so you can grow and mature. So that way, as you move into that season, not only do you get to stay there, but you grow even from that point. Listen to what it says in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. It says, my brother, encounter all joy when you fall into various trials. I will tell you, waiting is a trial, man. It's not easy. It says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work. God is wanting to do a perfect work in you, my friends, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Are you seeing that? So when you're praying and believing, God's not trying to withhold it from you. He's just going, hey, there's a perfect work that needs to happen first for you to be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So when you're moving toward that dream, when you're moving toward that vision that God has given you, it's going to be a time of preparation. See how this changes everything? See, most of us, we fear the weight. It's like, oh, I hate the weight. I don't want to wait. I just want to be healed. I just want to be restored. I want my marriage to come back together. You know, and I want my kids to come back home. I want that door to open for me with that job. And what we do is we perceive any kind of weight as God's punishment. We perceive it as, it not, as, as us not having God's favor on our life. I've seen that. I grew up under that theology. It was like, oh, well, you know, if God's not blessing you, man, you must be doing something wrong. But that's not the reality. Because even in the wait, God is doing good things. But if in your mind you think every time you're waiting that somehow God's angry with you, that he's frustrated with you, you know, because he's not just moving you, he's moving other people. God won't violate somebody else's free will to do something for you. He's looking for somebody available to move to come and bless you. And sometimes that takes some time. 
When we look at these great men in Scripture, all throughout history, including Jesus, it's really interesting because there's always this time of waiting. We, you, know, you see consistently in Scripture, you'll see 40 days and 40 nights. And even sometimes you'll see this, this, the thing of 40 years. But when it comes to 40 days and 40 nights, it's interesting because you have Joshua and Caleb, who we talked about last week, right? I don't know if you know this, but the spies, they went out into the land for 40 days. You see Jonah, as he went to Nineveh, he was trying to minister to them and get them to repent for 40 days. You see Goliath. Goliath came out and taunted the children of Israel for 40 days. You see that Jesus was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. So there's all these things that, you know, in the significance of 40, as you read in Scripture. But I believe that the most significant is actually day 41 because it was their day of breakthrough. So Noah, as he built that ark for, 30, for 40 years, it was, it was at that one point that there was breakthrough. The rains did come. And you see what Jesus says, he was tempted. And he endured the temptation that you and I, says that he was tempted in all ways. But he never sinned. He never gave in. But there was something that happened when those that could endure that waiting time, those 40 days and those 40 nights, those 40 years in Scripture, there was something that happened that on day 41, on year 41, there was something that they came out with that they didn't go in with. That God imparted something and gave something to them that they didn't have before that time. And that's what I'm talking about, the structural delays, is that God is building something in you during the time of waiting. He's building compassion inside of you. He's building this tenacity inside of you. He's strengthening you, strengthening you to endure things that you couldn't endure before. You know, just being transparent, you know, about three years ago, Veronica and I, as we were leaving Beaumont, you know, something terrible happened, and I, I nearly passed away from a, a botched appendectomy. I know it sounds more um, crazy than it is. It's just my appendix. <laughs> and for a whole week, I was bleeding internally and didn't know it and nearly died. And as a result of that, it caused an intestinal blockage and a bunch of other problems. And, and if you... If you don't believe that God created us, let me just tell you, God created us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and that everything is so intricately balanced that one thing off can wreck so many things. And so having blood in your abdominal cavity will actually cause your intestines to shut down. And that's exactly what happened. My liver began to fail, kidneys were failing, and I found myself in a really bad place. Long story short, four and a half months of recovery. And I would wake up in excruciating pain in my bowels. Um, And this went on for months and months and months. And every day I would wake up around 2 a.m. in the morning. And I would pace back and forth because the pain was so great. In the darkness. I didn't have the lights on. I didn't want to wake anybody up. And I I would just be like moaning in pain, walking. And often I would sit on the couch and I would try to get comfortable. And I couldn't get comfortable. No matter what I did, I could never get in a comfortable position. It would feel good. Ah then it would just start, the pain would radiate. You guys, some of you that have struggled with chronic illness, you know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't only attack your body, it attacks your mind. And so here I go into this time of waiting on the Lord, and I was believing for my healing, and people would send the most beautiful texts and the most beautiful cards. People were awesome and loved me, and, but yet here I am going through this just really brutal time And it was in that time that God began to develop a compassion inside my heart for people that struggle with chronic illness. It was in that time that when my mind was attacked and I would sit in the darkness and I'd have dark thoughts and I would question my faith and I would struggle like, God, like, are you even hearing me? Like, I I just feel like I pray and I pray and I pray and there's all these people. I remember one day crying out to God and saying, God, even if you don't want to heal me for myself, like, would you just heal me so these people that are praying would know that you're true? and that you're right, and that you hear their prayers. And I'll tell you, that was one of the most broken points in my life. I lost like 47 pounds. I would look in the mirror and I'd just cry. I didn't even recognize myself. 
And it was on a day, I'll never forget, it was a Tuesday night and I'm sitting on the couch in the darkness. The house is quiet. And this verse just came to me. If I can get that up, Isaiah 40. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. That's all I got. That's all I got that morning. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It says, they shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I didn't even get all that. I just got this. Those who wait on the Lord. And there was something inside of me that went off like a bomb as I sat on that couch early in the morning hours. And this is what came out of me. I said, God, I'll wait. I'll wait. I knew what I was facing. All my numbers are going downhill. I wasn't getting better. And the doctor had said, this is on a Tuesday. He said, if you're not better by Friday, I'm really sorry, but you're probably going to be back in the hospital again. And I sat on that couch that day and just said, I'll wait. I'd love to report that, you know, in that moment, there was this miraculous instant healing and the lights came on and, oh, I heard angels. No, it was still dark. And I was still in pain. But I purposed in my heart that day that I would wait. That was the shift I needed. See, I was praying that God would take my pain away And he was saying, I'm trying to do some structural stuff inside of you. I'm imparting some things inside of you that if this is your 40 days and this is your 40 nights, you're going to come out different. You're going to come out with the compassion for people that struggle with chronic illness. You're going to come out with the compassion for people that struggle with depression and anxiety. You're going you're to come out with the compassion and a belief and a hope that things can change for those where things haven't changed for years. And so when I speak to people, when I came out of that situation, when I speak to you now and I say, you know what, things can change and that God can heal you and that God can restore you and God can make things new. I'm not some pastor just saying stuff to you. I believe it. I've experienced it. So we went to Veronica's appointment just about three or four months ago. You know, she has a chronic cancer that there's no cure for. And as we sat in front of that doctor and she's, you know, saying, you know, you still have cancer, but we're seeing this. And we both said, we're going to wait. We're not going to lose hope. We're not going to ball and squall and cry and roll around on the floor. We're going to wait because God's doing something. And we know that God's going to heal her. When somebody says incurable, I'm like, well, you know what? That word's not in in the Bible. (laughs) That's not a word that my God ever said. So I don't give authority to that word incurable. I give authority to the word Jesus. Church, hear me out on this Mother's Day. There's divine delays and there's structural delays. God is moving And sometimes he's moving stuff in you. And it's okay. It's okay. Don't flip out. Don't freak out. Just know that he's doing a perfect work in you.